So good evening to everyone. And I want to first to thank um, the scientific committee of uh, Alphabet Company um, <clears throat> for this invitation uh, to me and to my colleague, Dr. Faris Kabalan from the um, OMS uh, surgery department at Galil Medical Center. Um, I think it's very important the issue about immediate uh, demanded issue now for many patients, the immediate loading. And uh, I hope our cases uh, will give a new perspective how we can um, apply this technique uh, in uh, severe uh, atrophic uh, jobs. Uh, so before I'm starting, I'll just tell you about our uh, hospital and our department. So we are uh, <clears throat> located in the north of Israel. It's in a uh, uh, place called Nahria. Uh, this is the place. Uh, it's, uh, we are very close to the Lebanon borders, about 13 kilometers from there. And our uh, hospital uh, is the second biggest hospital in the north of Israel. Our department is uh, one of the biggest department in, in Israel, and it's had three track of residency. We have OMS residency, and we have oral medicine residency. Uh, pediatric dentistry, and again, we have uh, um, advanced program educations uh, beside the, the track of uh, the residency. Uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, applications that we're using in our uh, department is the, utilizing the 3D lab. We have one of the advanced 3D lab in Israel, and uh, Dr. Faris Kablan will show you how we can use and apply this uh, uh, this lab for uh, the purpose of immediate law. So I want to uh, share with you a case, uh, with a severe case, and we call it, you know, me and Faris, when we discussed this, this case, we were to call it an impossible mission, because, you know, it's uh, many of our patients, as we all know, um, the first thing that they ask you uh, when you finish the surgery, I need something fixed. You know, you can't send me home without fixed prosthesis. And this is, you know, it's a very big dilemma for many of, uh, of the surgeon or the TP that uh, applying this technique of immediate loading. So this, this uh, patient, and I'm sorry, I can't show you the, the clinical picture of his teeth before, but I will show you a little the x-rays. Uh, he has all the time pain in the upper jaw, and uh, all the time that he went to a surgeon or to a GP, the, the, all of them told, told him, you know, the only thing that we can help you to just extract your teeth, sorry, your teeth, and you should stay with removable prosthesis for a long time. So he refused to go and uh, to treat his uh, um, pain or swelling. And this is his X-ray, as we see, this is a panoramic X-ray. And what you see here, this is the, the, the source or the, of the abscess that, we, that he has, the swelling that he has in his, uh, in his, in his uh, gingiva. Uh, he has also here a small abscess. Um, he has a cyst here and another preapical abscess here. And as you see here, it's not easy case to, uh, to treat, but you know, the panoramic is not, look not bad, as, as you see here, but if you go and to try to understand what you have here in the CT, you understand that the situation is much, much, much more uh, severe. As, as, so as you see here, you don't have enough vertical dimension, you have ear infection in this case, okay, as you see, uh, to see here, you don't have enough width to to uh, insert the in dental implant here. And if you go to the other side, the left side, you, you can see it's disaster for us because, as you see here, this infection and this cyst become uh, uh, almost perforation of not just the floor of the sinus, also the floor of the nose. So if you want to treat this case, okay, so the first instinct to do is just to extract, make bone graft and wait to understand what to do. And if you go to the, uh, to the anterior, to the premaxilla, as you see here, you know, it's a very, very thin, it's a knife edge uh, and a crest. So it's, it's really difficult case to treat 
And if you go here back, you can see this is this is the sinus here, and you see this is a very severe situation here to treat, at least if you want to do immediate implant. So we go to the lower jaw here, the CT of the lower jaw, as you see here, the big cyst here, as you see. Okay, so the, the same thing all the time, complaints of pain, of swelling in gingiva. So, you know, it's obvious that it's not a, a very simple case, and we can understand uh, the, uh, the decision of the surgeons or the oral surgeon or the GP that they told him, if we want to treat you, it will be in two and three or four steps, stages. We want to extract, we want to bone graft, we want to, to, to put the answer the dental, and then you will have the fixed and as you see here also in the anterior mandible, we have a knife edge here. So we can conclude that it's it's not it's not a, a, a simple case, it's a severe case. And if we vote here, if we have the audience, let's start to, to think about voting. Um, and how many of the audience can say that it's possible to do implants and immediately. I'm, I'm sure that uh, the results will be, you know, 90% will say, you know, do it in stages, and uh, otherwise you will not succeed because all the uh, traffic situation that we have in the post jaws. So <clears throat> this is what we thought, and we discussed it, you know, me and Faris, the case, how we can do it, you know, as, as uh, the demand of the patient, because the patient will not accept stages. He want one a stage and with immediate loading. So we thought that we can do extraction and use these two, two teeth, uh, the, 17, uh, the, the wisdom teeth as a vertical dimension and we can use it as a key for this case. But we need to extract all these teeth and try to find where we have the primary stability and to try to uh, uh, and do it with immediate loading. And we thought if we can do it right with uh, an insertion of the implant to the cortex of the floor of nose or the floor of the sinus, we can do it. And, uh, and this is uh, the treatment plan that we thought we can extract all the teeth and just the wisdom teeth in the, in the right side for the key. Uh, as a key projection for uh, the case. Uh, nucleation of that cyst, upper and lower jaw, sinus and nose, then floor lifting, uh, putting lift, dental implants in the plate that we can have good primary stability. There's bone augmentation and we're using the sticky bone with the PRF or the CGF and we will do the immediate loading. So we want to really to uh, success in this case and uh, we go as a team uh, to try to uh, do this uh, mission. So what we did here, you know, we have many, maybe we'll show you movies in the, in the end, but we have, we extract, we make a sinus lift both sides, we make a, a nose lift, floor of the, of the nose, okay, and in the end, we success to have a, a, a enough implants for immediate loading. And this is how the X-ray, you can see here, we have six implants, you know, after the extraction and bone grafting with very high primary stability because we use the cortex of the floor of the mouth, floor of, floor of the sinus, sorry, floor of the nose for primary stability is the same we did in the lower, uh, <coughs> in the lower jaw. And as you see here, you know, we use these two teeth as a key projection for our case. So we have the, the vertical, you know, the vertical dimension and as a primary loading in these two and this is the upper jaw, as you see here. Okay, this is before, and this is uh, how we finish uh, the, uh, the case in the first uh, stage. And this is how you see the, the lower jaw. As you see here, uh, we, we have enough implants here for, uh, for loading. And this is the case. Um, he's very happy. And uh, as you see here, he has very nice, uh, he can use this for smiling, for for chewing, you know, it's a soft diet, but it's look uh, uh, not good for him. And this is how it look uh, intraorally. Again, you can see here the uh, uh, 
and the occlusion, very the results with nice projection in both sides. And then we, uh, we we consider, you know, because we have six implants, but we did a very nice long graft all over the, the upper jaw. So we can, after three months or six months, go and add another dental implant. As you see here, we can add one here, one here, one into another four implant. So, but, you know, and in the lower jaw, we can another one implant. So, but the important things we can <coughs> do and the requirement of the patient so so he has uh, immediate loading he has fixed prosthesis for uh, uh, and temporary fixed prosthesis for three or a half years and then we can uh, advance or uh, our program thank you very much and uh, i think this case uh, can you know it's uh, it's, it's not an easy case but uh, as a homeless uh, we should look for um, um, Keys for success in every case and case, and I think uh, one of the uh, advantages uh, to uh, to do that is by finding the the bone or the, the place where we you have a good primary stability, and uh, try to think out of the box uh, to succeed in these cases. And if it's not easy case, you can refer it to OMS. And I think uh, many of us has a different approach. Uh, and I think uh, 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 Dr. Faris Kabbalan will show you now a more severe case and uh, how we can also use uh, immediate loading. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Dr. Faris Kabbalan will continue in, in the presentation. Good evening, my colleagues. Uh, it's my honor to participate in this uh, seminar. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Alphabiotic uh, that they can uh, organize such a seminar at the COVID uh, era. My uh, topic is about the immediacy, immediacy in the cases with uh, severe atrophic uh, posterior mandible. Professor Saruji talked before me uh, about the extreme uh, atrophic uh, jaws, especially the maxilla. I will, uh, my topic will be about the extreme uh, atrophy of mandible and what, what is the rule of the immediate uh, loading. What bangles us? Sorry. Uh, recently, there is uh, more and more uh, people and uh, clinicians uh, work with the implants, and they uh, more and more uh, demand for immediate loading of the of the implants. And actually, of the implants requires shorter periods and allows immediate recovery of function and aesthetics. And they have uh, excellent reports about uh, the, the high success rate. Uh, with the atrophic posterior mandibular ridges, the treatment is more uh, difficult and uh, it's more ch challenging for the treatment uh, for the uh, treatment team and for the patients. And during this uh, uh, lecture, I will try to focus with the cases that we yes can make immediate loading and we have to uh, I, I will give some topics how to choose uh, those cases B because again it's extremely important for the patient nowadays to have teeth at the day of the during the day of the surgery so with our experience regarding the residual mandibular tensions the nerve location and the available bone over the nerve, we have to decide this case is good for uh, immediate loading or it's not uh, recommended in, in other case. So how actually the, ex the, extrophic, uh, the uh, atrophic mandible at uh, the posterior uh, ridges, uh, maybe it's the time to say that when we talk about uh, uh, completely edentulous mandible, it's the, the, the rules are different because we can make 
uh, all in four, all in six. But if the patient have the anterior teeth and we have to keep them, so the scenario is uh, uh, different at all. It's something uh, different at all. So we we actually speak about the uh, mandible with uh, severe atrophy as the classification is covered and how well we spoke about the uh, class four, five, six. It means severe atrophy of the posterior mandible, and we have some options of treatment like uh, short implants, uh, bone augmentation, guided implant insertion. A nerve transposition and sometimes nerve transposition with bone augmentation. When we look at the uh, uh, posterior mandible with uh, extreme atrophy, usually we have the nerve. You see here the nerve is somewhere that we cannot place here implants. Uh, even short short implants we can we cannot put here because the nerve is so superficial. But if I look at the and entire mandibular height actually we have very nice bone height i have here in this case about 15 millimeters if we if we ignore the nerve and how we can ignore the nerve we have several uh, uh, ways that i will discuss uh, during the topic so here we can see that small bone or little bone above the nerve but actually we have a mandibular ridge the mandibular height I mean the entire uh, bone of the mandible. So, if the if the if I have bone more than six millimeters over the nerve, I can uh, insert short implants. As the case will be easy. But when in the cases with severe atrophy, when I have less than five millimeters above the nerve. This is the cases that we uh, have to treat, and we. This is the cases that we have actually we have at the hospital or at the de department, because uh, we have uh, many surgeons and a lot of uh, GBs that uh, send their patients to treat this kind of uh, uh, patients with the less than five millimeters bone over the nerve. Again, if I look here, I have very nice mandibular height. So I, if I ignore the nerve, I can insert here implant very, with a good length. And actually, in those cases, I can put the implant and make immediate loading. And this, with this picture, I can see that something wrong with the height of the bone and the width of the bone. Here, I can actually have to, to insert the implant here and to do something with the bone to augment the bone the the when the mandibular width is, is so uh, the deficiency is so severe have to make forced fall implant uh, bone augmentation and maybe at the second stage the uh, implant insertion so at this when i have mandibular height good mandibular height i can insert the implant and I can make uh, immediate loading. At those cases, I have to augment the bone, first of all, and the second stage, maybe make the implants and the augmentation. The location of the nerve is very important uh, in, in the treatment of uh, the plan for each patient, because here the nerve is so superficial that I have to do something with this, this nerve. I cannot insert implants because when I open, when I make my incision in the soft tissue, maybe I will uh, cut the nerve. So those kind of uh, cases are uh, actually very difficult to treat, but, and we have to use to the nerve transposition. The nerve transposition, uh, the posterior uh, mandible have a very important role, and in many cases, the option for the patient to have uh, implants. So in this case, we can see that we access the nerve uh, buccally, we extract it from the bone, and we insert implants. In this kind of uh, mandible, I can for sure make immediate loading because I have bicortical uh, anchorage of the of the implant because I have a high mandibular uh, a residual mandibular bone. Actually, I, I have this uh, classification for those cases, and uh, today I, I will 
connect between the classification and the immediate loading because in some cases again i we can see here this is a one case it's category one when i have good mandibular height more than 10 millimeters so i can put here long implant uh, if the bone is straight and i need at least six millimeters back up to insert four millimeters implant so in this scenario i can take the nerve out put the implant re reposition the, of the nerve inside the bone and actually the patient can have immediate loading and in those cases we actually uh, at the daily practice make nerve transposition implant insertion and uh, immediate loading of the of the implants sorry so here we can see this patient that have good mandibular height here we insert the implants and at the end of the surgery we uh, give him a, a complete denture as a supported implants of course as a immediate lo loading of the of the mandible With extreme atrophy, it's category four. We didn't uh, we didn't uh, talk or tell the patient about immediacy because here we have to do a lot of uh, uh, things, a lot of uh, uh, bone augmentation before the uh, surgery. So actually, in in those cases, we take the nerve out. Uh, bring a bone graft usually from the calvarian bone we insert the implants at the same surgery the implants are uh, act as a uh, fixation of the bone augmentation and we reposition the nerve under uh, the, the the bone block of course at, on in those extreme co uh, cases there's we didn't talk we didn't talk about uh, immediate loading because I have to to give the chance to to, to the bone to to uh, heal and to the implant to have uh, also integrate also integration. So in some cases, actually we have again to do something to to the bone, like in this case that that we can see here that the nerve is stuck at the middle of the bone. Uh, Bacolanguali. So I have no no way to to use guided insertion of implants because I have no room actually. And from the other side, the nerve is uh, located some some uh, some part at the lingual side of the of the bone and I think cortex bacali. So to to remove this nerve from the mandible, it will be extremely difficult and uh, the bone, the nerve can be affected trying to, 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 to take it out. So what we did here, actually we remove a window from here and we look at directly at the, the nerve, insert the implants outside the nerve with the direct uh, vision. As we see here, this is the uh, buccal uh, window. We remove it, you can see here the nerve canal and here I will here I would like to insert the implants as with direct vision to, vision to the nerve that it is located here I insert the implants I use the SPI implant because I can change its direction I, I began the, the direction buccally and after that I push it to the lingual to the, to the good uh, good place for uh, prosthetic rehabilitation and actually after finishing the implants i put back the uh, buccal window and i fix with bones with the screws of course at this case there is no immediate loading because i i have to wait for the healing period and this is the uh, cbct after the uh, uh, surgery we can see here the the bone a block that was removed before at the beginning of the surgery and the implants 
and we can see here the nerve. So I, with direct vision, I can insert the implant and, uh, the safe uh, way. Actually, the advent of uh, radiographic and CBCT guided surgery helps the clinicians to insert dental implants alongside the nerve. It could be at the lingual side and it could be at the uh, uh, buccal side, debate depends at the location of the implant inside the, the jaw. So here we can see this is the case with the, uh, this, is the nerve. this is the buccal side. The nerve is located at the buccal side, and we have more than five millimeters uh, distance from the canal to the uh, outer cort cortex. So I can insert here a, a implant, let's say three or three point two uh, or three point three, for uh, for sure. I use the guide to insert the implant in this way. I can insert a long implant, and of course. Uh, and, and with those uh, cases, I for sure make immediate loading. The, this is the nerve. It's located uh, lingually, and we again have a good uh, uh, distance between the canal to the external uh, uh, cortex. I can for sure insert implant with guided surgery, and of course, I can make immediate loading. And those Two examples, the, the nerve again is the, at the middle of the uh, bone and I didn't have enough bone buccally or lingually so I here I, I have to, to choose a different uh, way. I cannot use here guided surgery to insert implants. Again, this is the, uh, the nerve at the uh, buccal side, the nerve at the lingual side and I can insert the implants and I can make the immediate uh, loading. Uh, it's it's very important how to to look at the uh, our patient and its own uh, CBCT. And we all all the time, if I have the chance to use the guided implant insertion and to make immediate loading, it will be my first choice of treatment. I have the case here that it will be. Uh, Will be see will see it with uh, with my movie, sixty years old female. She has bilateral edentulous posterior mandible. The anterior teeth are okay. We can uh, treat uh, them and we can can keep them. So we, there is no uh, room here or there is no indication to extract the teeth and make all in five, all in six or all in four, because. Uh, it's very important to keep uh, teeth. Uh, the available bone above the nerve is less than five, five millimeters, and uh, actually this patient was sent to our department for uh, nerve transposition. After we uh, discussed the case according to the CBCT, we uh, can see that we can insert here implant with guided surgery, and of course the patient demand was uh, to to have immediate loading because she has uh, she have uh, some uh, social event very important for her so uh, again the treatment plan was to insert implants with guided surgery we can see here the the planning uh, at the uh, this side we insert the implants buccally two implants buccally to the nerve at the anterior part we uh, decide to insert the implants lingually to the nerve, so so we have very nice uh, different options with the guided surgery to insert the implants. So at the both side we have to insert two implants buccally to the nerve at the left and the, at the right side, and two anterior implants anterior to the uh, nerve, uh, lingual, lingually to the nerve and we can insert long implants and of course we can uh, make immediate loading for sure and we will uh, know that this will uh, work very nice with the high success rate of the of the operation and of the implant 
we use usually guided uh, implant insertion that that is uh, bone supported because we are very important in severe cases to identify the the mental nerve during the surgery uh, and uh, protect uh, protect it so we can see here the impl implants uh, drilling uh, is if sides at the post side one two three one two three and the fixation uh, screws with this guide we call go to the uh, operating room and we will see live surgery for this case again some pictures about the guided uh, surgery and this case was uh, performed under general anesthesia because the patient have uh, some problems with uh, local anesthesia. During the surgery, of course, after local anesthesia, this is my our operation room. We use uh, uh, PRF and growth factors uh, usually for uh, those kind of uh, surgeries because in severe cases, we usually add bone. It's like small bone augmentations about uh, around the implants. This is the preparation of the bone. This is was a xenograft. And this is the intraoperative views. It's very important to have the, the first incision at the middle of the of the crest. Be, at the middle of the uh, residual keratinized tissue because usually the keratinized tissue here is also atrophic it's very important to make sharp incisions and not to harm the uh, soft tissue here here is a very nice topic at the lingual side we usually insert the uh, surgical curate and we make the uh, dissection with the with the body of the of the instrument, so we can have very nice uh, uh, flap. Again, here we. This is the mental nerve, and we have to uh, release around the nerve. This is the guide, as we see, and here we can see that. <clears throat> Here we can see the anterior, the, and the, the lingual uh, direction and the buccal direction. And so this is the drilling. You can see it's, the direction is so lingually, but I, it will be no problem because the, the uh, prosthetic work, we can uh, fix those uh, angles. The second, drilling and I use uh, you can see this is the third one and it's go buccally from lingual to buccal we, uh, we can see here the dips and the, uh, the, the direction again we proceed with the implant preparation sides we have a lot of bone because we actually we the, the drill is inside the cortex some some the main drill is inside the outer cortex so we have a lot of bone that we still at the still see at the drill we have to use a lot of uh, uh, water to cool the the bone because again we here, the, some of our implants are actually located at the buccal cortex, and it's a very hard uh, bone, so we have to rinse and wash the area very nice. Okay, <clears throat> this is the uh, three drills. I, I try to, to measure the depth here because I, I want to insert as the planning uh, so the neo implants and with the length of uh, 
11 and a half millimeters, I think. And this is the uh, uh, implant inside in C2, and this is the insertion of the implant. Again, we have here almost the implant is located at the cortex. The patient have a very nice uh, cortex. The second implant, again, This is the anterior implant, and that this is located actually at the lingual side of the nerve. Here is the, the socket of the uh, root that we removed before, and we can see here the insertion of the second implant. It's very I like this implant. It's my first time in Bay to use it, but it's very nice. This is the implant in situ. I have to add some bone around the implants because I prepare bone before the surgery. Now we try the apartment. We have to, to, re, to make a reduction of the uh, their height, but for the while I try to choose which uh, angle. This is the reduction of the uh, abutment height. And this is the, I, I like this picture very nice and uh, the immediate loading will be uh, finished here. The same, the same uh, operation on the left side, you, you can see here the very slow insertion because it's very important to keep the, the, the the soft tissue intact. This is the distal uh, release. And again, with the body of the instrument, I make the uh, separation of the payost and the uh, elevation of the lab. Again, I, have, I like to uh, see the nerve, the mental nerve, and to protect it. I make uh, room for the guide because uh, Usually we have to expose more uh, bone for the guide to insert the guide. And this is the guide. And this is the slot for the mental nerve. And this is the drilling for the implants. And actually I, I use the entire height of the mandible. I, ca I, have, I can make here a anchorage of the nerve at the lower border of the bone and it will be very uh, uh, fantastic for the primary surgery and the immediate loading Actually, here I, I, the guide was removed because I have the initial direction, and I, I want to, I want to see the entire, I, to, to use the entire height of the mandible because the guide, I cannot see the actual uh, depth. So here we can see that I go inside the bone with the maximal depth with direct vision. I can make double check with, with the insertion of the guide again. I hope at, uh, it will. I will be see it here. I, I'm not sure, but during the drilling, I can make double check. I can insert again the, the guide and uh, check my direction. And again, we have to use a lot of, uh, of uh, coolant. All the time, because actually we did we deal with the, the cortex of the mandible, not the uh, the uh, cancellous bone. The implant is located some somehow inside the uh, cortex. I make double check to 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 see that I have the accurate drilling. I can check with the instrument, and again I insert the implants. 
it was 3.5 i think <coughs> And this is the anterior uh, implant at the lingually to the nerve. I like this implant because it's very friendly and the insertion is very uh, nice, even in difficult or hard bone. I like the baggage of the uh, implant because it's easy to open. And we can see here the insertion of the uh, first implant at the buccal side of the nerve. We have a very nice uh, primary stability due to the uh, bicortical uh, anchorage of the implants at the superior cortex, at the uh, inferior cortex, and in this case, at the buccal cortex. So the uh, primary stability will be very fantastic, very nice. So this is the apartments and the, uh, after reduction, and it will uh, be followed by the uh, immediate loading of the implants. This is during the immediate loading, and this is will be uh, the temporary restoration for the patient for the next three uh, months. I think this is the end of the uh, movie. So what what I have some uh, tips from this topic. First of all, uh, the extreme mandibular uh, posterior ridge can be uh, augmented and we can insert implants and the patient can have a, a fixed prosthesis over dental implants even Never mind what the, the, the atrophy of the mandible. But we have something to do in the way to have a, a implants and teeth. So if the residual bone above the nerve uh, is less than five millimeters, there is no option of a short implants because short implants, we need more than six height and more than six width. So if we have less than five millimeters, we have to consider a nerve transposition. But actually due to the, to the uh, advent of uh, guided uh, implant surgery, we can reduce the, 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 the need for the nerve transposition. If the mandibular height is more than 10 millimeters, we can use immediate loading. Never mind if we make nerve transposition, or if we make guided implant uh, insertion. We have to look at the nerve. When we discuss with our colleagues or with our patients the uh, options for the treatment, we have to look at the location in, of the nerve because it's very important. And like the case that we see before, uh, if the nerve is located buccally or lingually and uh, we have enough uh, bone dimension from the nerve to the outer cortex, we can in, use the guided implant insertion and the guided in, implant insertion give us uh, uh, the possibility for immediate loading because nowadays immediate loading is considered the art of the state of this, of our uh, uh, work 
uh, usually today when we deal uh, and talk with the patient about uh, uh, treatment planning, we have to think first of all about if I can give him teeth at the same day, and it will be uh, uh, very, very nice. And I have to think how to give my patient teeth at the same day, because it's ex extremely important to the uh, patient. And it's very important to, for the uh, function of the uh, implants and for the aesthetics of the uh, soft tissue. And we can use the again the guided implant placement alongside the nerve. It may be considered at a lot or many uh, of the cases. And of course, again, when I use immediate uh, implant, uh, when I can use the guided implant placement for sure. I can use or I can uh, uh, make at the overdose implants uh, immediate loading. Thank you.